Hello and welcome to this week's Live Local and Loud with me, Kevin Gorn. In this week's show, I'm chatting to Ryan from local rock and rollers Gazelle. And we'll be playing lots of homegrown music by local bands. I hope you're all well and are having a great week. Let's kick this week's little show off with a bit of Jersey Bud and Easy Come, Easy Go. That was the fantastic Jersey Bud, Easy Come, Easy Go. He can next be seen, oh, in a couple of days' time, on Saturday the 9th of December 2023. He's going to be playing at Soundhouse in sunny Leicester, and he's going to be supporting Hardwick Circus. And according to their Facebook page, there is a quote from their Facebook page. It says, one of the best gigs I've ever seen. Raw, visceral rock music before it all got too damn corporate. So, what can you say about that? That sounds pretty awesome. So, yeah, so that's uh, Hardwick Circus and Jersey Bud playing at the Soundhouse on Saturday the 9th of December 2023. Doors at 7.30. That sounds like a fantastic gig to me. I haven't seen Jersey Bud in quite a long time, actually. Um, Okay, so now is a bit of JJ Lovegrove and Minus Cube and Better. They don't see me I am still a daughter Like my mother resting on 
That was the wonderful JJ Lovegrove and better. Must admit, every time I go and see her live, always brings a, a lump to my throat. Um, quite emotional, poignant gigs. Uh, looking at her Facebook page, uh, right at the top, it's an invitation to share an evening with her this Christmas. She'll be recording a very special, intimate Christmas concert and you're invited apparently. Yes, you are invited. That's what it says. Um, she hasn't got any more details, so presumably she's keeping us in suspenders while she uh, releases the details of where and when uh, shortly, I presume. But anyway, so that's on her Facebook page. That's JJ Lovegrove. JJ Lovegrove Music she is on Facebook. So great stuff from her. Okie doke. So now it's time to jazz things up a little bit with a bit of King Brasters. Brasters and Mambo Italiano. A boy went back to Napoli Because he missed the scenery The native dances and the charming songs But wait a minute Something's wrong Hey Mambo, Mambo Italiano Hey Mambo, Mambo Italiano Go, go, Joe, you mixed up with Cristiano Oh, you gotta please do the Mambo like a crazy Anna Hey Mambo, no more Tarantella Hey Mambo, try not to mozzarella Go, go, Joe, you mixed up with Cristiano Try and GVD with a bassy guardi passo Anna Hey, go back I love it when you dance or run back but take up some advice, casino, learn how to mambo If you're gonna be a square, you ain't gonna go nowhere Hey Mambo, Mambo Italiano Hey Mambo, Mambo Italiano Go, go, Joe, you mix that with Cristiano Ryan Weston Italiano, go, go, Joey, and mix that with the piano. That was King Brastards and Mambo Italiano. Um, it looks like they've just released a new album, a Christmas album, no less. Uh, yeah, so that'll be that. That will be interesting, actually, coming from them. Um, and also they've just recently been supporting the South as well. It used to be called the Beautiful South, but they've been supporting the South in their gig, at their gig in Bakewell in the sunny Peak District. Okay, so now it's time for this week's interview where I'm chatting to young Ryan from local rock and rollers, Gazelle. But first of all, we'll start with one of their songs, Magic Carpet Ride. And the sun comes in 
That was Magic Carpet Ride by the incredible Gazelle. And this week's interview is with Ryan from the band, frontman of the band even. Hello there, Ryan. How the devil are you today? Oh, Kevin, how are you, mate? All right, yeah, I'm, I'm very good myself. Thank you very much. I'm awesome today. Thank you very much. And thank you very much for chatting with me here on Live Local and Loud. Yeah, great, not a problem. Great stuff. Um, now, Ryan, just just briefly, um, what's it? What's it? You're the front man of Gazelle. You got quite a lot going on as well. You got to sing, you got to play guitar, you got to move around a bit. What's it like being the front man of such a band? Yeah, it's great. It's great, mate. Yeah, I, I obviously got me work quite. I have to. I do a lot with the, with the writing and the stuff like that. But it, it pays off, mate. And the, the tunes are coming out, and I enjoy it. So it's not. It's not an hardship. You know what I mean? I enjoy doing it. So yeah, I love it. And uh, I don't. I think I'd still be doing it if I weren't in the band. I can't. I can't stop writing and stuff like that. So keeps me know. going, mate. Keeps me. Keeps me going. Because you, you do a lot of solo gigs as well on your own, don't you? Yeah, I do a few, mate. Yeah, the ones that uh, the ones that we don't do with Gazelle, smaller gigs and stuff. I'll if it's especially for a mate. Or some, I'll play a few little acoustic gigs, but I like keeping out there and keeping busy. You know what I mean? And I've wrote all the songs were written acoustically, so they all work right. acoustically. So it's nice to get out there and just play them in the bare form. Do you know what I mean? Sometimes and yeah. get back to the, the basics and, and play them how they how they started. I mean, it it feels like for me that, that that you seem to have like music in your blood. Really, I could imagine if you're at a party, like a house party somewhere. I could imagine at the end of the night, it probably all set, set up and end up. W- sitting around you watching and listening to you playing the guitar is that is that how it goes yeah sometimes mate yeah i'm like the <laughs> one around the campfire playing wonderball that everyone gets in with <laughs> it's, it's it's not it's normally uh me taking over the radio and doing everyone's head in to be fair taking over the uh like on the spotify or or, or whatever it is and and taking over the tunes that way and usually uh, it's a load of like obscure 60s stuff that no one's interested in so they'll get the ump after 10 minutes and turn it off and put their own stuff on but you know <laughs> that's how it is mate so is is that what your is that what your DJ sets are like then after your gigs? Oh no, I try and please the crowd a bit of them, but yeah, once I've had a few beers, definitely the, the weirder stuff starts coming out and everyone starts getting the um. But yeah, I like, I like to play a lot of Motown stuff and keep it keep everyone on the dance floor. Do you know what I mean when it's when it's the DJ sets? A lot of a lot of the big hitters. Well, I was I was going to say because I mean your music seems to go through different phases. I mean it's there's like Northern Soul in some of your songs. There's a bit more Indian Oasis in some of your songs. Um, do you like to experiment with new sounds and 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 stuff? Yeah, definitely. As I say, I've, I've got a lot of influences. I've got a real broad range of uh, of stuff I'm into, and I take I take it. I sort of get all that inside, and if I hear something, I'll, it'll start me off, and I'll, I'll go off on a tangent on one thing, or I'll start listening to another album by someone, and and I want to do something like that. And I think it, it helps not to stand stand on your laurels. Do you know what I mean? And 
and do the same thing. So I, I enjoy experimenting. I get I get bored quite easily, to be honest, with sticking with the same sort of sound. So I, I try and tra- change it up and, and mm. just push myself, really, especially in the writing aspect, to, to do something a bit different. And I think it just, just keeps it interesting with the gazelle thing, do you know what I mean? And keeps it people does. on the toes guessing what we're going to do next. So, because my friend and I actually were talking about this at the weekend, but do you ever worry about... Um, if you change a style a bit for uh, one song or one album, if it might lose some of your uh, some of your fans because they perhaps might not like that particular style. Not really. I think I think you've got to do what stay true to yourself. That, that's what art's all about for me. You've got to you've got to do what's what you like and what's true to you. Otherwise, it's it's just that it's more commercialised and you're just yeah. doing it it's a business end of it then and i think you've got to do what you you enjoy doing and what you you appreciate because i think then that rubs off and i think people appreciate that then and it comes it comes with that that pe- i know people will enjoy it because we're enjoying it and mm. it, it, the, the songs are there anyway they've always got big choruses and stuff like that so i think we got because because we write such good songs i think we've got the leeway to to do experiment with them a little bit more and that yeah. core gazelle sounds always there do you know what i mean but we've uh yeah we just like to play around with them a lot and yeah, like I said, I think it's just more more the fact that we're doing something we enjoy, and I think that comes across quite well. I think it does. It comes across very well because, I mean, at your gigs, um, I'm embarrassed to say that the last gig I went to of yours was probably about three or four years ago now, um, but I remember yeah. they were absolutely rammed and everybody was just having such a good time. It was incredible, absolutely heaving. So that was about three or four years ago. Um, so where do you see, and unfortunately, dry, yeah, the last gear I saw was Dryden Street Social, I think, just before it closed down, unfortunately. Yeah, like you said, a while ago, wasn't it? And that was, uh, yeah, he's slacking, mate. But uh, yeah, we've got um, we've got, we've got got a couple coming up. Uh, we've got the Chief Funky Music Cafe on the 16th of December. And that's with, um, we did, uh, last Christmas, we did a gig with, we, we wanted to do something a bit different. So we got an, uh, an Elvis impersonator to oh. do the, uh, an Elvis tribute to uh, supporters. And then he came out and did a couple of songs in our set we played and he, we, we both sang like I did a few Elvis songs and we, oh, wow. we, we were really confident that that would go down well. And then like just at the time of the gig, we sort of got we got a bit nervous about it because it's not, not the dumb thing really, is it, with uh, band? I think it, we were just trying something new and yeah, yeah we we, uh, we were a bit nervous just coming into the gig. But after a couple of songs, everyone really got into it and it, it, the, the crowd went mad for it so wow. we thought we'd do it again this year and, and try and try and put put that on and please people again we were, we were just going to be a one-off really but we've had that many people saying they loved it and even the people that missed out wanted us to do it again so yeah on the 16th we play the music cast and do the same thing again so that that should be a great gig I, I suppose at the end of the day elvis sort of inspired the people that inspired the people that inspired you i suppose so. Yeah, yeah. Well, like I say, mate. To be honest, I I I started off when I was younger. I, I was more into my Oasis stuff, and and as I've got older, I've, I've really I've always liked the fifties and sixties stuff. But I've really like threw myself into that as I've got got older. I think my music tastes have matured a lot, and I listen to a lot of that now. So he's mm. he's one of my idols. Always has been Elvis. Elvis, the Beatles, and Bob Dylan are my three all time favourites. So it, it's it's great to do something like this. And and it's, it, to be honest, it's a chance for us to appreciate an Elvis gig without having to pay to get in as well do you know what i mean <laughs> absolutely so it's, it's nice for that expect, aspect of it as well yeah so obviously your your fans like that sort of music well like your music uh which like you say has been inspired by uh, him so that's probably why why it goes down well at a gig really because eventually you know he's 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 inspired your sound anyway so that that sort of that's why your fans enjoy him i expect but no that sounds yeah, interesting yeah, I, I think everyone likes a bit of, of Elvis. You can't not like a bit of Elvis, can no. you? Know what I mean, especially once people have had a few beers and that, and you start belting out suspicious minds. Everyone loves it, don't they? That's right. Yeah, and yeah. Okay, brilliant. Um, okay, so we'll talk a little bit more about that later. But uh, yeah, so now you've well, since I saw you last about four years ago, um, you've been touring about the country. What what you've been doing then since I saw you last? Would you say? Yeah, we had. I think we had a tour uh, the year after you last seen us around the country, and we've we've played a few gigs. We've been uh, been a bit quieter this year, but we've been in the studio a lot, and and right. like say changing the sound, and in rehearsals changing the sound a lot. So we've sort of concentrated, got knuckled down and concentrated on that. But hopefully, we'll play a lot more gigs next year and and get back on it. But yeah, we played we played all, all over really last yeah. last few years. So. It was nice last year to have a, a little bit of a breather. Play, we played a few gigs here and there, but not not quite to the extent as we were in previous years because we, we yeah. are 
write a gig in, uh, known for being a big gig in bands. You know what I mean? We, we enjoy getting out there on the road. So absolutely, yeah. But, but you know, hopefully next year we'll uh, we, we'll be playing a lot more around the country. Okay, yeah, because I notice also you seemed every time you release a single, um, you also release a quite a good video actually for it as well, don't you? So you must spend quite a lot of time sort of doing the the behind the scenes stuff like that. Yeah, we do, mate. I, that's another thing. I proper throw myself into a like every little detail's got to be right, and, and mm. I probably do do the lads' heading sometimes. Like we're doing this and we're doing that, but I think they all come out really well, and and uh, we've got we've got some great videos now. I think, and it's sort of become part of the Gazelle package. I think part that's part amazing. of the art of Gazelle, where we, we've uh, made a rod for our own back, really, because every video's got to be on point now and and great. But I think it's a lost thing, really, because because you don't really get like the days of MTV and stuff now. The video is sort of a, a second. A thing yeah. really now it's not it's not something people focus on but i think yeah we we always enjoy doing them and obviously we had stephen graham in one of the early ones and that uh really gave us a kick with doing the videos to the, to the standard that we are yeah and that's uh it really pushed us on and we yeah like i say we enjoy doing it yeah he's, he's one of my favorite actors at the moment i remember seeing that video actually a while ago what was it like working with him oh it was brilliant mate yeah he couldn't he couldn't do enough for us he uh he, he he didn't want anything for doing the video. He just he just came as a fan. Of, he liked the music, and oh. we got an email out the blue one day saying he he wanted to he'd be up for doing a video for us. And we weren't sure if it was mates having a bit of a joke with us, but uh, he turned up and yeah, we he, he was great on the day. He was he was helping us out, telling things, and he he still now men, men, mentions us in his magazine interviews and stuff like that every now and again. He'll say, "Oh, I've mentioned you on so and so." So I can't can't thank him enough for that. Um, yeah, because we've just recently watched the um, what's that, that restaurant one that he was he, he was on. So that was pretty good. Ah, uh, yeah, is it Boiling Point? And that thing. Yeah, that's it. Boiling Point. Yeah, brilliant, yeah, brilliant yeah, film. yeah. That nice, brilliant series. Excellent. Okay, let's play another one of your songs named after one of my favourite fruits, Clementine. Now, can you just tell us how how did the inspiration for this happen? Were you were yeah, you eating top- an orange one day and thought, ah, oh, yes. That's it, mate. It's <laughs> right, topical as well, it. isn't it? Quite a Christmas thing, isn't it, Clementine? So That's true, yeah. It. Although well, it was yeah, it no, was it, released in July 22, but... Uh... Yeah, that's it, mate, yeah. <laughs> I think it was the summer as well, so not very Christmas oh, there. But we, uh, yeah, it came, it came about, we, um, we that was that was one that I, I, a song I had for a while, and I knew I wanted a, a girl's name as the, as the title, and mm. I was playing around with a few things, and I remember, remember the old, um, it's like an old folk tune, Oh My Darling Clementine. Oh yeah. yeah, we used to sing it at school actually, and that that popped in my head, and I thought that worked really well, and it it, it just become the hook. And once I sang that, that was it. That I knew that that would that be the title for the song. Oh, brilliant! Okay, so what's the song about then? Is about a girl? Yeah, yeah. It was just it's, yeah, one of them really. It's a, a bit of a an ode to. I, I don't. It's, it's an hard one to explain. I, I'm, I'm not. Some, it's one of them songs where you sort of leave it up to interpretation, but it's a, it's a hopeful song. I think really that's that's the best way to explain it. It's, it about having a lot of hope and uh yeah and sticking together really that one of them things okay brilliant so let's play it so here's clementine by gazelle
That was Clementine by the incredible Gazelle. And this week's interview is with Ryan from the band. So, Ryan, what's this about some BBC Radio Leicester Make a Difference awards? How does that? How did that come about? And how did you do? Yeah, we got uh, we got an, um, an email through our management our manager Steve got an email through uh, asking us to play but we do we work with the BBC quite a bit like we've done a few bits for them in the past and we've had a few tracks of the weeks on there and stuff so they play they play our stuff fairly regularly and uh, yeah it, so we, we got asked to do it but it, it was a great night it was a good to play on the the Athena stage because uh, obviously it's the old Odeon so you've got had like the likes of the Stones and Stevie Wonder Martha and the Vandellas all played there so wow it was a, 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 quite an iconic, iconic place, really, for us to play. But it, yeah, it was great. The sound was great. We had, uh, we actually had a violinist oh. on stage with us for the first time, and that went down well. So she's she's coming back on the the sixteenth to play with us that day as well. So there's another exciting little bit for for the gig. But yeah, oh. it was great, and it was it was it was nice to help out for such a great cause as well. And obviously, there was a lot of people there that that done a lot of good stuff. So it was a great great night all around, really. With um, a violinist, you say so. Yeah, yeah, we're switching it up again, mate. But yeah, we've got uh, obviously we've got a couple of songs that uh, Diamond Eye and Violet Hour Blues, which are a bit a little bit slower than some of the other stuff, and they they work brilliantly with the violins. And it, 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 when you hear it, it just it just comes together. It makes it a completely different song, but it, it, in a good way. Like it's, uh, I think people are really going to enjoy it at the gig. Okay, so now you've you've obviously played a lot of gigs uh, locally and around the country in the last few years. Um, is there one that sticks out as being your favourite gig that you've played so far? Uh, to be honest, the, the gig last year, the um, the one with, we did with Elvis, that was at the O2 last year. Uh, that, oh, that, Les- that Leicester O2. That was, yeah, Leicester O2. That, oh, right. that, was, that was brilliant. Uh, yeah, we done we done two gigs in the space of a couple of weeks. Uh, we supported Tom Me and a couple of weeks after, and, and that went. Th- th- those two gigs stick out in my mind as two of my favourite we've, we've done so far. The yeah, uh, yeah the one of the sixty was just brilliant atmosphere and. Yeah, we, it, the sound were great, and it it was just a top night all round. And then then the following couple of weeks later, we played with Tom Ian at the O2, and that um, that that was that was brilliant. We did we did, weren't we weren't sure what to expect because uh, obviously we'd been in support, so we weren't sure if we'd have many fans there coming to see us. But just before we went on, went on, we had uh, everyone singing, chanting our name, so we knew we were going to have a great gig. And we got out there, everyone was bouncing, so that that was another great great one that stuck it stuck out in my mind. Anyway, brilliant. And do people sing back your lyrics? Oh yeah, all the time. Yeah, it's quite it's quite a thing with gazelle gigs. Even the, it's not even just the lyrics to sing the guitar riffs as well. Sometimes, sometimes they kick us out of time. And we have to start again because because uh, <laughs> because they're, they're all going out of time like with each other. But yeah, I love it. Yeah, I wouldn't have it any. I wouldn't have it any other way. It's a uh, it's a great feeling, you know, when everyone's everyone's singing it back to you. It's no, there's no better thing really. Yeah, I can imagine that. That must be magical. So, who? How does how does the music making process happen? Is is it just you, or or is it do you? Um, jo- do the other bands join in to help create the music, write the words and stuff, or how does that work? Uh, I, I do the so I'll, I'll write the songs at home, so I'll do the lyrics and the, and the melodies, and I'll have the odd guitar riff and stuff, and then we'll, we'll take it to the lads and I'll sort of explain what sort of sound I want to go for with it, and then we'll, we'll just all chop and change ideas. Oh, uh, right. But it varies song to song, really. With Lady Blue Sky, we had a, a lot of pre production work where I went in the studio and did did various bits before we went in there, and then we, we all brought it, to, it come to life and we all got in there like but yeah usually it works where I'll, I'll write it at home and then we'll refine it in the, in the rehearsal rooms and until we've got something that we're proud of like oh, okay so like like you say you, you just you'll start off with it and in, in an acoustic form then and take that to the guys yeah that's right yeah or, or i'll record little ideas if i've got a riff or a bass line or, or whatever mm. and then we'll take it to the lads and then Torby will come up with these bits and Ben will come up with a riff, do you know what I mean? We sort of yeah. all, all put in when it gets to that that sort of part of it, yeah. I saw on your Facebook page, because uh, you like your videos, didn't you? You've done a making of Lady Blue Sky video. That was pretty good as well. Yeah, yeah, that was great. We've done that with John John Knapp. From, he was in a, a 60s band called Legay. As I say, I'm into my 60s music. and They're in a, a bit of a mod band, mod type band called Legay. And... He was uh, he, I asked I, I asked Steve, our manager again, to uh, to get get in touch with him and see he'd be up for coming down to the studio. And well, at first it was a with a view to pl- playing on some bits, but he don't play guitar too much these days. But he uh, he came over and uh, we, had, we got on like an ass on fire to be fair. And he had he had some ideas and we we were sort of bouncing off each other in the studio. And yeah, he, he was a good help that day. He, he's actually featured at the start of the track. There's a little. Uh, speech bit at the, at the start of the track is like a little trippy trippy oh, intro yeah. and he, he he's the one that uh is talking on that but 
Yeah, they were a great band back in the day. They were, they were on top of the pops and all sorts at one point. So, yeah, yeah they were clo- very close to making it. Didn't, didn't quite get there, but they were very close. A very good band. And I noticed the the actual video itself that you did for Lady Blue Skies, filmed from the rooftop, which looked a bit scary. Um, how did that go? Yeah, definitely, mate. I had to have a few beers before I got got myself up there. Do you know what I mean? But yeah, it it, it was good, mate. Yeah, um, we wanted to do something like like I say, Lady Blue Blue Skies, quite sixties influence and yeah, got them trippy 67, 68 vibes to them, I think. And uh, so we wanted to do something a bit like um of the era. So obviously, what better way than the, the Beatles rooftop gig? Wanted Absolutely. to sort of pay pay homage to that really, and I think I think it came about really well. Yeah, I think we all look good on that video as well. We've got that sixties yeah. thing going on, bright colours, and we had uh, got all our mates in for, to be extras and stuff, and, and it went really well. Yeah, I saw that. That was brilliant. Which, which rooftop? It looked like the Barley Mow again. Which which rooftop was it? Uh, it, it was Hogarth's. Obviously, Gazelle renowned for having pubs in the video. Is what a surprise, yeah. but yeah, it was uh, it was Hogarth's <laughs> opposite. You know, the market tavern that way. So, oh uh, yeah, we. Uh, uh yeah it was down silver street so it, yeah we it's it was um we had we had quite a few issues with locations we were originally meant to do it in nottingham and uh there was a, f- a few issues with the location so and it was like a last minute thing and luckily that they, they were kind enough to let us use it but it, it worked out well in, in a way because obviously we, we like to keep it in house and we're quite yeah. proud of being from leicester and it it's a not another nice little little uh, little nod to leicester in the video and obviously you use the pubs because there's a lot of character and architecture there yeah, that's it. Nothing to do with the beer. So, and as far as gigs coming up, so like you were saying, your next gig is what's the date and time again? Date and venue? Yeah, it's the sixteenth of December at uh, Two Funky Music Cafe, and that's um, I think it's the seven seven pm start there, roundabouts. We've got uh, Silver Lines opening up, and then we've got um, El- John Graceland, who's the Elvis, Elvis, and then and then Gazelle, and then we've got an after party till four in the morning as well, which I've got a DJ at, so I'm, I better uh, better behave yourself and not have too many beers before we go on. <laughs> Apparently, I, I was told who who is the um, who's the guy who owns the Two Funky Complex? Is, is it VJ? Is his name VJ? Yeah, VJ. That's it. VJ. Well, that's I, it. Yeah, yeah. Chatted to him a couple of day, a couple of years ago, and he told me that the the day after, I, I guess it's the sun. Is so? Are you playing on the Saturday or the Friday? Uh, it's Saturday. Saturday. Yeah. So yeah. on the Sunday, apparently, it becomes a church. The venue does. Oh, does it? Yeah. So, so literally, just a, a few hours after you finish, the clean, cleaners will be going round, and then they open it the next day. For, yeah, yeah. For the bit, worshipers bit of a and contrast. Stuff. Bit of a contrast from the Church of Gazelle, anyway. <laughs> it is. It is brilliant. <laughs> but it's great how they're making use of the venue, though, all the time. Is it's brilliant? So, yeah. Yeah, That's brilliant. Cool. Yeah, it's nice, nice for the community as well, isn't it? That they're, yeah. they're doing stuff like that. That's a fantastic little venue as well. Okay, so that's that. And you've got another gig uh, later on in December. Yeah, we're supporting Tommy in again on the 22nd, I believe. That's the Friday, Mad Friday as well. So hopefully that'll be a, be, be a busy one and an enjoyable gig again because uh, it was a great, great time we had last year. So yeah, I'm looking forward to both gigs. And that'll be in the O2 Academy in the big room, I take it, the b- big square mm, one. Yeah, yeah, that's the one, mate, yeah. Oh, that's amazing. Yeah. That is absolutely fantastic. Where we're meant to be, that one. Before we talk about and play your latest single, Lady Blue Sky, if you'd just like to let us know how people can get in touch with you. Yeah, we're uh, on the socials. It's all at, at Gazelle Band UK, so easy enough to find us. Uh, yeah, Gazelle yeah, that's, Band and UK. That's over, that, that's over everything as well, so all the socials, Gazelle Band UK. Excellent. That's brilliant. And so your latest single, your brand new single is Lady Blue Sky. Um, lo- love, Like I said earlier, I love the making of the video and the actual video itself. Great, great stuff. Can you just tell us a little bit about how did it come to be and what's it about then? Yeah, this was uh, this was uh, this was one. It, it came back quite quickly, actually. And it was uh, I sort of pushed myself lyrically to do something that I've never really done before lyrically. And it was a uh, Bit of a uh, bit of a weird story in it, like I say, it's got psychedelic vibes. So, I'd, so I went with that, ran with that, and it's just a bit of a bit of a weird one, really. There's a, there's a lot of reference, personal references in there, but yeah, uh, yeah, it's it's, a, it's all a bit mad, really. But I, I love how, I love the uh, the imagery of it. I think it works really well, and it's a gr- great chorus on it. Just uh, one, probably my favourite Gazelle song to date, to be fair. Okie doke. Well, thank you very much today, Ryan, for today's little chat. I really appreciate it. Great to catch up with you and see what's going on with the band. Um, so I look forward to seeing you on 16th of December at Two Funky Music Cafe. I can't wait to see the Elvis Presley tribute as well. That'd be fantastic. And of course, Silver Lines, who are supporting. So thank you very much, Ryan. And here is Lady Blue Sky by Gazelle. What 
That was me chatting to young Ryan from local rock and rollers, Gazelle. And that was their latest song, Lady Blue Sky. Great stuff from them. Right, now it's time for Novas, a band who I only ever seem to see at Glaston Budget. Uh, is Novas and Going Nowhere. Yeah. 
That was Novas and Going Nowhere. Actually, speaking about Glaston Budget, uh, a little bit of news from them is unfortunately next year's Glaston Budget, they're not going to be having any local, uh, well, any, they might have local bands, but no sort of uh, small bands, no um, non, no non tribute bands, no original bands, which is a bit unfortunate. Uh, but there we go. It'll still be a good, good old do. Um, but yeah, I'll miss, uh, I'll miss seeing the, um, the original bands. That brings us to the end of another live Local and Loud with me, Kevin Gorn. I hope you enjoyed the show. Don't forget, if you want to see what gigs are going down locally in Leicestershire, check out our handy gig guide in www.musicinleicester.co.uk. And you'll also find a handy playlist containing all previous live local and louds and the interviews therein also on musicinleicester.co.uk. They'll be in a playlist on the right hand side or at the bottom if you're looking at it on the phone. So do have a great week and I'll look forward to seeing you here Hermitage FM next Thursday at 5 o'clock.